Here's a preview of what you'll hear on this episode of Beyond the Wheel. Well, I, my inspiration comes from a lot of places. I go into a, a restaurant or a, I'm always looking at different interiors everywhere I go. Um, I'm always trying to find something unique and a little bit, you know, eye-catching and something that sets us apart from everyone else. Now enjoy the show. You are listening to Beyond the Wheel, a podcast about the people and ideas that drive the RV community forward. This episode is brought to you by Battleborn Batteries. Battleborn Batteries are the best name in the RV and marine industry. These batteries are designed to replace your existing lead-acid batteries. They come in a variety of dimensions and amp-hour capacities. This ensures there is a Battleborn battery that is right for your needs. These batteries are backed by a 10-year warranty, allowing you to get out there and stay out there. The best solution for your battery anxiety. Whether your adventure is on the road, on the water, or off the grid, Battleborn batteries keep you out there longer. With the complexity of all the systems in an RV, I always say it's not if something's going to break, but a matter of when is something going to break. That is why I think an extended warranty for RVs is so important. We first interviewed wholesale warranties back in 2019 and immediately became impressed with how their policies worked, such as you can take your RV to any licensed repair shop, including mobile repairs. They also have personalized service plans, making sure you are getting the right policy for your needs. And if you think your RV is too old for a policy, you might be surprised to hear that RVs up to 20 years old can still be approved for a policy. That is more age lenient than most RV parks I've stayed at. Go to wholesalewarranties.com forward slash beyond the wheel or click the link down below in our show notes to get your free quote today. Have you ever wondered who comes up with the interiors of RVs and what it takes to make the interiors feel like home? Well, you are about to find out. Mindy, the interior designer for the diesel lines of Fleetwood, American Coach, and Holiday Rambler, joins us today to talk about what goes into developing the interiors of RVs. Kenny and I were definitely surprised by some of the complexities that go into making an RV feel like a home. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode with Mindy. Hey, Mindy, thanks for joining us today. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at Fleetwood? Yes, it's good to be with you guys today. Thank you. Uh, My name is Mindy Cox, and I am the interior designer for Fleetwood, American Coach, and Holiday Rambler. And my sole focus is the diesel uh, division and the high-end diesel pushers and core diesels for those products. Okay. So it sounds like you would be pretty busy. Um, Yes. (laughs) Most all of the time. If it's not designing new things, it's working with our team to make sure what we um, have specified and what we're planning for our new designs are coming in and keeping um, things on track. So yeah, it's been very busy though, especially um, the last year for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that's a good thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, so when you're coming up with interior designs and layouts, how much do current trends play in the decision-making and maybe current trends that you're hearing from like the RV side of things and also like home interior trends? So current trends um, is a very important part of what um, needs to go into the design. In the RV side of things, I have experience in home furnishing. As a matter of fact, my family, we are involved in retail furniture. So we, we get a lot of exposure to that side of it as well, but it's really boils down to just good design. So trends come and go sometimes a little quicker than others, but if you can stay on the cutting edge of design and really bring things to the table that are not going to be something that runs its course in a really short time, but will be, have some longevity with it. That's where I feel like it's important in what we do. You had mentioned earlier that, that your, your, your focus is Fleetwood American Coach and Holiday Rambler. Are you like the lead person? And then do you have individual people running those, uh, the three coach coaches, or is it one team and you guys come up with the ideas for all three of them? Well, we're very team oriented here. I guess I focus on the design, the interior design for American coach 
um, Fleetwood, meaning the Discovery, Discovery LXC, Armada, so those core diesel products, and then on the holiday side, uh, the Armada. And there's also a young lady here that I work with. Her name is Andrea Smeltzer, and she is um, a huge part of our success. And she works um, a little bit more on the gas side and um, some of the diesel lower end products as well. But we we work together. Um, we have product managers for each of those divisions. So we work very closely with those guys and the engineering to bring great ideas. Um, and then we have the luxury of working with Doug Miller, who is um, not only head of sales, but he also is extremely knowledgeable in all of the products. So we get a lot of input from sales that we bring in and work with um, him on some new ideas and things like that. And it looks like you're in a design center right now. So you I have am. a full full design center where you can mock stuff up and, and yes, compare we, palettes and things. We built the design center within the last um, probably two and a half, three years. And we set up vignettes here. So we have it divided American Coach, Fleetwood, Holiday Rambler. And we build out the vignettes. So we bring in let's say we're doing a whole new wood kit, a whole new trim package. We bring those items into the design center and we build out what's called vignettes. And in building the vignettes, we are able to see how certain things fit together, um, how we, if we like certain things about it, if there are things we wanna change, it allows us to do that before it goes into the motorhome and we're out in production changing things on the fly. So it's been very awesome for us to be able to have this as a, as a working place where we can, you know, experience things before they um, actually go into, we can prototype before they go online. That's a great idea. So this, what I'm looking at right behind you then, is that like a mock-up slide? This is a mock-up slide. Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. And we actually, we built it to scale. So this is really a slide box and we order all these parts and pieces from our suppliers and we have, um, a team here that comes in and works with us to build build this out for us. And then we have some sample faucets and we bring in our soft goods, which is all of our bedding and pillows. And we have smaller beds that we, we kind of make them a little shorter than a real bed, but we show our headboards and all our fabrics to make sure everything is very cohesive throughout the interior and everything really is, is what we, that meets our expectations basically. Yeah, it's great. Instead of just doing it all on paper and maybe CAD mm -hmm. or something like that, you can actually physically see it and maybe even move things around like in real, I'm going to say real time because it yeah, is Yeah, we but, do. But. And we even we even get some things in here. We're like, oh, I don't know about that. So we change our minds then back and forth a little bit. So yeah, it's it's very, it's been a great place to, we try to keep people from coming in here and just kind of hanging out and messing <laughs> up stuff, but it's, uh, it's, it's a really neat area. And it's quite large. Over on the other side, we have a full wall of our backsplashes, our fabric, our furniture coverings, floor tile. So we keep a wall, a galley of everything that we're using out in the current coaches going down the line in case a customer wants to come in and walk over to see, you know, they might come in to do a special order and they can see all of the finishes here in the design studio. Okay. Okay, we'll That's come back cool to that you. special order thing. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. So when when you're starting a layout, uh, an interior design of a coach, let's say you're starting a, a new design, what do you think of first? Is it are you more focused on comfort or function, or is it something totally different? Well, I, my inspiration comes from a lot of places. I go into a, a restaurant, or a, I'm always looking at different interiors everywhere I go. Um, I'm always trying to find something unique and a little bit, you know, eye-catching and something that sets us apart from everyone else. So when I start thinking about a new interior, first it has to be something that is, you know, luxurious, something that's going to appeal to the individual, the customer. That's important. The coverings are important. The colors, furniture, all of those things tie together and it's such a small space. So it's, you know, you think about, there's so many details. When I first started in designing RVs, it was back in the early nineties. 
I walked in the first coach and I looked around and it, there's just so many details and parts and pieces and you don't really think about it, but just a balance in itself. Yes, it functions to keep the shade in place, but it also has to have some design to it. And so everything has a function and space is extremely important. Uh, we were looking at today, we were in a floor plan and we kind of looked to see, and there's a little area where I feel like, you know, we can steal about three inches just to make that that vanity just a little bit bigger and give, give them just a little bit more room. So, so yeah, there's a lot of things that go into, into that. And the floor plan is extremely important as well. Just the layout and how that customer is going to use the coach when they're living in it. You know, is it parked in a, an on-site luxurious resort, you know, down in um, a, a resort in Florida, or are they actually using it and living in it every day? So it kind of depends on the end user and how they, how they live in their home on wheels, basically. So do you have a lot of contact then based on, on how you just answered it? Do you have a lot of contact uh, with marketing as far as how they envision the end user to be using each type of RV? We do. We work extremely close with our marketing team. We go to a lot of shows together. Um, we bounce ideas off each other. We work with them and kind of showing them what we're thinking and, and helping them put together a lot of the beautiful brochures and the websites because that's when you're surfing, you pull something up. I mean, that's something that is really going to catch your eye and bring you into that coach and look around and see everything like in virtual. We do a virtual tour online that they put together as well as they do a great job of showing the interior packages that we offer from the pillows to the bedding to the flooring and and display that online um, and that way customers can go on and say oh I like this one it's the lighter cabinet and they they can actually look at the gallery and and see what appeals to them online is very important and yes we do a lot of work with our marketing group they do an incredible job. <laughs> How far in advance after, like, let's say there's going to be a new American coach model coming out. How far in advance of that model coming out are you working on the interior design? That's a, that's a great question. I think we're always working on things, to be honest. And if we see something that isn't working as well as we'd like, we might try to address that and implement that change a little sooner than model year, but a complete model year change, we are probably 18 months out in starting to design that. I have to sometimes think, okay, I'm, am I living in 22 or 23? Because everything <laughs> is a whole year ahead. So, you know, it's kind of hard to keep up, but yeah, we we're constantly looking at the long lead time items, specifically wood, wood stains, wood colors. That's a lot of, you know, uh, requires a lot of people involved in changing that uh, on our sourcing team as well as our suppliers. So we have to work way ahead on certain things. Okay. Okay. So like the, the current supply chain issues, is that something that affects you now? Would it be something that affects you down the road because you are planning so far ahead or because you're planning so far ahead, does it not really affect you all that much? It affects everyone in the world we live in today. I think we have done a great job with working closely with our supply chain and keeping alternatives that are as close as possible to what we want. That's just a, something that occurs even in a, a world that where it's not such a challenge, things get discontinued. Um, so we are obviously looking for, if not an equal substitution, something that might be just even better. So, so yeah, okay. that's something that we've gotten really good at. Do you only deal with the actual living space or do you deal with, do you also deal with the underneath space as well, like the storage compartments, things like that? No, I, my focus is interior design. So okay. everything from when you step up into the coach and from that first step in until the very back is where I like to, to focus. I do not get into the engines, the engineering side. I understand a little bit about what they do, but that's not where my focus is. So I'm not considered a prod product manager. Um, I will just stick to interior designer. That's what I love to do. And that's what I, I'm doing. So. so how do you think about storage when you're coming up with these designs? I mean, because storage is a premium on, these, on these floor plans. 
do you purposely try to incorporate storage into your interior design? Oh, absolutely. I think sometimes, you know, you have to realize you are in a motor home, you are in a space that can only really hold so much. So less is more. Um, but <laughs> in doing so, you put yourself in the space and you picture yourself cooking in the kitchen, making a meal. Where do you put your dishes? Where do you put your glasses? You know, the, the space of the, the layout of the kitchen. And that's just the kitchen area, the galley area. There's not a whole lot of storage. Usually it's for relaxing and, you know, watching television, reclining back and, and being like in your, you know, your living room. The bedroom, clothing is important. You've got to have drawer space and yep. hanging yep. for shirts and possibly long, you know, longer dresses for women. And so being a woman, I love shoes. So I was thinking about, you know, how we could build some shoe storage and and just getting ready in, in the bathroom. Countertop space is kind of a big deal. Mainly more for women than men, I think. I know a lot of men have product, but we have hair dryers and <laughs> curling irons and makeup. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, you have to think about how you would be living in the space. So it's a huge part of what, what we did, what we do when we design. We're looking at storage. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I have toothpaste, and I think that's about it for the countertop yeah. space. That's all the counter space like I need. It's just huh? toothpaste. Yeah. <laughs> My wife, on the other hand, and not so much. And what you what you say really really uh, rings home with me because. When my wife and I were shopping for an RV, we would kind of like, I guess you could call playhouse. Like we would pretend, what would it be like? All right, we just woke up and now we want to go into the bathroom and get ready. And then when we come out of the bathroom, we want to be able to get dressed. Where is our clothes going? Where where are the hangers located? Is it easy easy for us to actually be able to live in this for a week, two weeks, three, whatever it may be on a daily basis? Exactly. I think. So and thinking I think about uh, everything, like we do... With our lighting is very important in an interior. So we do what's called our mood mode. So you get up in the morning, you don't want bright lights coming on, you know, so you can set, you know, for to turn your lights on and they'd be on a dimmer, have the heated floor and the kitchen area. So when you go in to get your coffee, I mean, so yeah, you're absolutely living in a, a really high end uh, apartment or loft or home on, on, um, on wheels. So you're exactly right. Yeah, it sounds like a little condo. <laughs> yeah, it is. American Coach especially is a luxury condo, we call it. <laughs> okay. I think in those American Coaches we looked at at the FMCA show, Kenny, they I remember them having amazing closets. Yeah, I, I think, think they do. Yeah, I've done a little bit of research out. Of course, I always love to know what our competitors are doing. And um, we walk the product and see a lot of things. We also build really nice showers. I don't know if you noticed that when you were walking through our units, but we call it the spa showers. So we have a luxurious large shower that has a seat in there with a built-in niche for your shampoos and things like that. So you're not feeling like you're getting into a little small little area. You know, you have plenty of space when you're in the main bathroom. So we, we do all tile, full porcelain, um, our showers are hand laid with accent tile and from various places um, around the world. So we, we pride ourselves in a lot of the, the products that we do bring into these. And I think you you were the, the first or the only class A's that I have seen that had kitchen islands in them. And I thought that was really yeah. creative to see and great to see because for me, I, I do all the cooking and I don't think you can ever have a, enough so in the bathroom, I don't need a lot of counter space, but in the kitchen, I do for all my prepping and for cook work. So I was really pleasantly surprised to see an island kitchen in a class A. Yes, that was at the Tampa show. It was our 45E floor plan that we brought out and we had great response. Like I said, it was new and different. And the majority of our customers or people that came through were really raving about that. So, and it's a great area too to hang out in the kitchen because that's a you know an area where people are gathering around when you're having guests over and you're watching a game you can um we had the, the cafe table with the bars you know the higher chairs and then you could turn around and use the island and put out a charcuterie tray and some cocktails whatever you want to do so it was um, it was great yeah that's good i'm glad that you're getting good feedback on that because i really liked it myself so when you're looking at things like soft materials for 
chairs, you know, like the dine, dining room chairs or the living room chairs. Uh, how do you find durable materials that are going to hold up to all the use that they yeah, get? Yeah, that's a really great question. The, the suppliers that we use, we have developed relationships with a lot of mills over the years. And we really work to make sure that the materials meet what's called the Wiesenbeck test. So it's, it's basically considered commercial grade double rub testing. So you know that you're going to be able to, you know, pass all the requirements that are needed. Um, so the fabrics will hold up over uh, not just a very short time, but for years to come if possible. So we take a lot of careful, you know, select, we select, um, we take our time, we test them, we bring them in, we, we look at all the specifications. There's something called hydrolysis testing, especially in polyurethanes that we use a lot in furniture. And you want to make sure that that is probably like a six year hydrolysis, which means, you know, you're not going to get any peeling or anything like that from because the coaches are in different climates they're in freezing cold they go to Arizona they could be you know in a lot of different climates so we want to make sure the things that we do select will hold up to to being in that you know in that type of climate okay. so it's what did you say the name of that test was the Wiesenbach Wiesenbach yeah it's it's more just a test to show commercial grade versus just a regular residential oh. style and it has to meet 30,000 double rubs so that would be a machine rubbing back and forth 30 something thousand pounds before it starts to show any type of of wear and then we also have to test and do everything with 302 which is um, flame retardancy so everything we put in we do a burn test and it can only burn so long. And if it goes too fast, then it does not pass. So we have to get it treated. That's called 302. And it's just a, something that keeps there from being any type of, you know, if there was a fire or something, the fabrics would not would not burn. So we do all of our fabrics in, inside the motorhome with that. That was actually going to be my next question was about safety and fire. You already mentioned the fire part of it, but what about like windows or door sizes? Do certain windows need to be a certain size? Do entryways need to be a certain size when it comes to safety or exit routes? Well, every floor plan addresses egress. So if there is a fire or there is a, a mishap or something and people have to leave that motorhome, there is a way that you can get out of there. And we have a really unique exit that we developed probably, I'm guessing, maybe five, six years ago, it lets down out of, you pull a hatch and it lets down and it allows you to escape out the back. And it has been something, I mean, proven that it would save lives for sure. So it's something unique to American Coach. No one else has really come up with anything like that, to my knowledge. I'm sure they have their ways of getting out, but this particular egress is very unique. If you did let it down, it is, you can actually bring it back up and reuse it again. So it doesn't, you know, okay, like an airplane. Okay. When yeah, that was going to be my question. Out, done, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what, Sean? I think we might've seen that at the FMCA rally and we weren't really sure what it was. Maybe. Yeah. What? It looks like was it, it, it's kind of um, camouflage well, because it looks like it's shelves. And it, but yeah. yet it really is the, the escape hatch and they can use that as steps to go down. That's, that's very ingenious. I like that idea a lot because, you know, the, the class A's diesel pushers and, and the gas coaches, they sit up pretty high. So when you, if you were to have to go through one of your windows, it's a good fall down. I mean, it's a yeah, pretty good drop. Yeah, you might escape the fire, but you end up with two broken legs and, a, yeah. you know, so, so that would allow them to get out of there and not feel like they have to jump or, you know. That's uh, very cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Something you have to think about. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we, we've learned a lot about safety throughout the years of doing this podcast, all the different things that you just don't think about until somebody mentions it. And you're like, oh, yeah, that would probably be a good idea. Yeah. I mean, in terms of safety, the dinette chairs, we have a little strap down on the bottom that actually snaps the floor. So if you were to hit the brakes, things don't go flying. Everything has seat belts, even though they're hidden pretty well. There's, they're all automotive. So there's a lot of safety features 
not just on the interior design, but just of course the whole chassis and, and drive of these, these things are just pretty incredible to me. So are there any times in the design, well, I should ask this differently, in the design that you do, do you also take pets into consideration at all? Like um, food bowls or litter boxes or anything like that when you're, when you're looking at designing an RV? You know, that everyone takes their, if they're a pet owner or they love to take their dogs or cats or whatever their pet of choice is. But yeah, um, you know, we've done some interiors where we had a floor plan that had a, a place for a, a custom bowl and also even an area to do a, a dog house or a little kind of their own high end crate, if you will. But we don't do a lot of that. We just, I think a lot of people in these have their dogs in their lap a lot. Yeah. Um, something that we have done, which has been good for having someone sitting up at the front, is they love to, it's called the buddy seat. So the passenger seat's just a little bit wider than wow. standard. And a lot of them like to sit their dogs up in the seat with them when they're going down the road. So it's kind of, kind of neat. We came up with what's called a seat and a half. It's not really a true buddy seat, but it's just a little bit. The buddy seat can get really wide and it kind of intrudes on the entry. So we kind of came up with a seat that that's kind of in between standard and the buddy seat. It gives just a little extra space for, for your pet to sit with you. So That's great because I think a lot of RVers travel with their pets. I, I think it's I think a lot of times people travel in RVs because of their pets, because, you know, the camping lifestyle, the RVing lifestyle is just so pet friendly campgrounds, whereas hotels, even if a hotel is pet friendly, they usually charge you an extra 25 a night or something like that. And we run into tons of people with pets. So it's great that you guys are thinking of them. Yeah. It's their other, it's their children after their children are gone. (laughs) Definitely. For me. No, Mine's like just my children. I don't even have children. Yeah, so. yeah. or they're, they're children. <laughs> my, they dress split. them up and they sit, they put them in strollers <laughs> and, and take them around the show. It's, it's awesome to see yeah. that. I'm not that far yet, but I, I definitely <laughs> spoil mine. <laughs> One day, probably, though. <laughs> what about choosing colors? Like, just I'm, It's got to play a pretty big factor because just you could probably have the same layout, but in a, a different color. And it probably changes not only mood, but maybe even like the appearance of size and stuff like that. Could you just talk a little bit about maybe just the importance of using colors and how you guys choose your colors? Absolutely. Um, The colors are very important. Obviously we do look at trends a little bit more in fashion and home furnishing to see if things are going a little bit warmer, a little more gray, you know, what, what seems to be happening in fashion usually trickles down into interior design and then the RV industry is a little behind that. But what we try to create with our interiors is we've used it. We've kind of said in the past, just a really beautiful canvas. So you have a, a, a palette of if, if it's more cool tones or a little bit more warmer tones that coordinate well with the furniture, the woods all kind of, you know, can work together. Because what we typically do is come up with three to four interiors, interior packages, and they have a name. We usually have three to four wood colors. So this interior might go with this wood color, but it also could go with this wood color. So we don't want to limit ourselves too much, but we also want to allow the customer after they purchase their motorhome to take it and decor it and use their own pillows. If they want I'm from Tennessee, you know, I love orange. If they're from, you know, where they might want to put their colors in there for football season. And we don't want to just go crazy with, with too much of that, but allow them to, to decorate or accessorize in something that gives them, you know, makes it their home and and hang their artwork on the walls, you know, so that's, so colors are important. Of course, Um, we just don't want to go crazy with going a little, like I said, too trendy because we want this to be something that that will still look in trend and and in style in a year or two from now or longer, obviously. So unless they're, you know, those people that like to change their motorhome and buy a new one every year. <laughs> <laughs> 
which, that which happens happen too. too. Yeah, 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 yeah that definitely to happens. Pick it up enough to give them something they want to. Oh, did you see that new <laughs> that new floor plan or that new? <laughs> so you kind of got to keep it fresh. How are you guys collecting feedback from customers, and how does that? help determine kind of what new features you're going to try and incorporate? A lot of the feedback I feel comes from social media, from attending rallies, shows, seminars. Our dealer base is, they're oh. great to you know, give us their feedback. Um, if they feel like something is a, a great, you know, asset and they can sell it more than others, we listen to, to their uh, feedback. A lot of a lot of different places actually, and like I said, it kind of depends on demographics and the segment of the the motorhome. If it's a Class A diesel, that might be a little different feedback than maybe you know the person over here that is the weekender or the 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 gas product. They might be you know going to racing. I mean, it just depends. There's so many different ways people use these, which is awesome. It's a lifestyle. And this lifestyle you choose. So it could be yeah. a lot of different things. What about uh, some of the most popular features that you've seen recently? Like say maybe, I know for a little while, I think bunk beds were really pop popular. I'm not sure if they still are, but do you see, is there something that's real popular right now in some of the features that you guys are doing? The things that come to mind, bunk beds are still pretty popular just because it allows you to get your kids back there. Um, what we're seeing a little bit more now is a trend toward people working more in their motorhomes oh, yeah. and traveling, but using them for, for their jobs. So we're trying to look at ways to have an office space inside where you can do a Zoom while your family or your kids are playing or doing gaming, you know, in the, in the room next door. Um, that seems to be a popular, popular trend right now. Furniture that's very comfortable, like reclining, theater seating. Um, so in the evening when you're watching your big screen TV, you, know, you can kind of lounge back and not feel like you're just sitting on a park bench. So we really focus a lot on our furniture here in this product. And we really want to make it comfortable like you would in your home. So it has a residential look and feel, but yet it's going in the RV. So that's kind of, um, furniture is very important because you spend a lot of your time really lounging and sitting in the living living space and sleeping in your bed. So mm -hmm. our articulating beds are a big deal you Can raise and lower while you're watching TV, there's different modes. And we, we really work with a local supplier that has, they built a beautiful mattress for us. That's not necessarily Tempur-Pedic, but has more memory foam and just is a very, very comfortable. And that seems to have gone over really well for us not using that you can break raise it up and you're kind of you know it's out of the way but as you sleep you can just click a button and it and that's in you know in the american coach product yeah that's one thing i was going to say is the beds seem to have gotten way more fancier in the last few years <laughs> than they had been in the past they have gotten fancier yes <laughs> they have <laughs> I was glad to hear that you mentioned the uh, the working space too. So when Sean and I are at shows, I don't know if it's the the people that we talk to or if it's maybe because we're industry podcasters, but we seem to talk to a lot of people that are looking to be able to work from the road. So I'm glad to hear that you guys are experiencing that as, as well. It's not just in our little bubble that that is something that is gaining popula popularity is working while on the road. Yeah, it is. And even families that take their children on trips, they might decide they're going to take off on a summer or a, you know, a few months and go to all the state parks. So they, they do their homework on the road. So it's important to have a space where your children can set up their, their iPads and their, you know, computers and work, but also experience, you know, life on the road and seeing what's out there. So, yeah. Yeah. The homeschooling seems to be getting more popular too. I think it is. Yeah. My children are grown and they're, they're gone from college and everything now, but homeschooling was not as popular, but I think it's getting more and more popular for sure. Yeah. 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 Particularly with the COVID pandemic, I think it's probably increased a lot more lately. I think so. Yeah. So do you, do you have a favorite feature that's in the RVs currently that that you know you're like this this is my absolute 
favorite thing inside these RVs? They're right all now? my favorite. Everything <laughs> here is amazing. <laughs> oh, goodness. If I had to pick out one thing, gee, that's a tough, tough question. Or maybe okay. a must have. Now, there is a wine chiller in our American <laughs> Eagle that's pretty neat. Yeah, that that's is nice. neat. I remember yeah. looking at that too. Yeah. Yes. And the dish drawer we do is very, it's a really quiet dishwasher, but it's also, it's a drawer, but yet it's a dishwasher as well. It's kind of funny because you have to knock on it to make it open and not a lot of people realize that. So they come in and they're tugging, <laughs> tugging. It's like, I got this, it's knock. Whoa, what? <laughs> so, Interesting. Oh my goodness. We're doing a, a lot of neat things with our showers. Um, we have rain shower head that are really nice. They save water, but they make you, you know, feel like you're really getting a nice spa shower um, when you use those. We've got touch faucets in the kitchen area, so you can just, nice. you know, um, or you can just raise your hand in front of it and the water comes on, which is nice when you're cooking and stuff. Um, but I'll tell you a really cool feature we went to this year, and I can pretty safely say we were one of the first to do this, is we partnered with Cambria Quartz Countertops, and we were able to get those in our American Coach products, and it's the most beautiful quartz in the world. I mean, it's just very high end and it is, you can't hardly damage it. Like the only thing that can cut it is like a diamond. So it's extremely durable. Wow. It's in a lot of you know, very um, custom homes. So I'm really excited about the, the quartz that we did. They, it has a lot of beautiful veining through it. And the company is a great company. They're made in USA, family owned company. So we really have enjoyed partnering with them and working with them. It's been a great, a great ad. So when you come up with a design that, that you're happy with, do the engineers ever come back to you and say, we can't do that, or you got to change this? All the time. Yeah, that's, that's like, they they love to say no. <laughs> what do you mean? They never say yes. <laughs> As a matter of fact, they say, what are you thinking? You know, <laughs> no, wait a minute, wait, we got to work on this. But then they kind of start to see they take crazy ideas and sometimes make them reality. So we're getting a little bit of both. And, and sometimes it's a give and take. So I have to give a little and then, but yeah, that, that definitely happens. We should have asked in the very beginning. So when you start your interior design, are you given the size of the RV and how many slides and everything's blank? And they say to you, all right, now fill this space the way you see fit. And then do they give you any type of um, restraints as far as, but don't fill it with X amount of weight, like st st try to keep weight in mind or anything like that? All of the above, yes. And the, and the floor plan team is really driven by, um, I mentioned Doug Miller. He's um, actually who I report to, and he is very great with floor plans. He's been in the industry for a very long time. He has sold a lot. So he thinks about the customer and what the end user is needing and wanting. And there's only, you know, people say there's only so much space and that's right. That is true. But just like with anything else, as time goes on, people look for different reasons to own motorhomes. So you're constantly trying to come up with something that it's not just change for change, but it's change that is, you know, something that can be really unique and I always say when the customer comes in and they poke their head in, if they don't love what they see, they're probably going to turn around and, and head out. But when they poke their head in and they say, oh, did you see? Then they'll continue to come on in. So we want to bring them in. The first thing I notice, I think, when I go into a, a particularly a higher end coach is the lighting. I think the lighting is so important. And you talked about that a little a little while ago that you guys have the you, you focus on lighting too. So I, oh my goodness. I found that interesting. Big focus of what we do. It's it's probably one of the most important things to me um, because I'm a little over the top with lighting, but I love dimmers and we have to make sure that our Kelvin levels, it's called, aren't too bright or you feel like you're, it drowns out all the colors in the interior. So it has to be a specific I won't share our secret Kelvin level, but <laughs> it has to be where you can still see colors and it's soft on the eye, but it also allows you to, if you're, whatever task you might be doing, if you're cooking or you're watching TV, light levels change with what you're, 
using the, the interior for. So, and we do, we really love our accent lighting as well. So an accent lighting, if it's on the floor and the ceiling behind the windows, you know, we do a lot of that. It just adds a lot of ambiance and it, it's great. So we, we work with some great suppliers on the lighting side. We're also tweaking that constantly, making sure we're staying up with, with the latest, greatest. I know, I don't know if you remember when the industry went to LED and you would walk in different units and one would be bright, bright white. This one would be yellow. Like, and so you have to think about all the different lights that are in there to make sure they all match. You don't want a, a halogen, a warm halogen against an LED fixture. You know what? It just doesn't, doesn't work. It's interesting you say that you look at the lighting. Yeah. And then the other thing that I think has changed over the years that I've been RVing is we've gone from very, very dark colors to now it seems like there's more lighter, brighter colors in the RV. Like the wood is not always a dark, dark wood. It's stained the lighter and you know, the, yeah. the colors are brighter. I, I've, I've noticed that as a change probably over the last few years as well, too. And, it, and that really follows along with residential kitchens. Um, majority of kitchens now are painted. If you, you know, follow, you know, renovation or watch HGTV or, I mean, you see a lot of white kitchens, painted kitchens versus dark wood. It's just not in trend at this point. I think there's a a little movement back toward wood, but a more natural coloration or darker for accenting. So it's good to have both. We like to have the painted, but we still have our customer base that absolutely loves wood and they appreciate wood. So they like the, the warmer tones. It just makes them feel better and they, you know, they don't like the painted. So yeah, it's, or, oh, they walk in, oh my God, I love this painted. It's not like those dark, you know, so it's all in, in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, I really enjoy episodes like this uh, because- well, It's my you, first one. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, great. Well, thanks. Um, we're glad to be your, your first podcast here. But, you know, it, it's, it always surprises me of just how much thought goes into, like you were saying, with the lighting and the kelp. I would have never guessed that there were limits that you, I, I, would, I would have probably just thought, well, you can never be too bright. So I'm, I'm glad that you, you know, went into that detail and kind of explained that a little bit. Yeah. And I mean, have you ever seen, some people are sensitive to like the blue lights or you can't go to sleep if there's a certain, like that's me. If the little light is on, on the, the receiver box, I'm like, ah, okay, you know, turn it off. Yep. So we're, really... we're very conscious of that. And, and even when you go to sleep at night in your RV and let's say you have a skylight in the bathroom and there's a, a glass door, you know, that might be bothersome for some early in the morning when the sun so we want to make sure we don't have when you're in your bedroom you know all the shades can be drawn it can be nice and dark back there and um, make sure that the sunlight isn't coming through while you sleep or you can raise raise them all up hit a button everything is on shades where they can raise and lower and they're tied in we use a real cool system while we're on this subject it's called firefly and it's a panel within the RV and you can control everything with just a touch. Um, and it's, it's in zones. So it's really easy to work. And you can also set it to your liking. Some people prefer lights to be brighter. Some prefer them to be less. So it's, it's a way to customize how you like things. Well, I think that's all of our questions, Mindy. Is there anything we might have missed or that you would like to add to the conversation? Just that American coach, when, when you think about American coach, I ask one question to myself and that's, you know, what am I designing this for? And it's for that customer that is looking for luxury. You know, they've worked really hard in their job or career and they want to reward themselves with an RV that is going to be something special. And the brand American coach is a very strong brand. So that's, you know, and keeping that in mind, while I do my interiors, we don't shortcut and we don't do cheap very well. So we really go after designing it like you would design your dream home. And we really work to try to spare no expense in, in making those just stand out and be the best interiors we can build. So that's, it's so fun. I love it. I've been doing this now for about 25 years. 
started in the industry, um, I had no idea I was going to be doing RV design. I was a graduate with an um, interior design and architect degree, and I ended up in this industry. And I love what I do, and I love you know the people that I work with. It's fun. We work hard, and we have our you know our challenges, but we have a really great team, and and it's um it's rewarding. So yeah, I just want to touch on the fact that I, sometimes you feel guilty saying, "Oh man, I really love what I do," but it's fun. <laughs> get to meet a lot of cool people too along the way dolly pardon being one i designed her coach back in the day oh really her private interior yep she had her own bus that was kind of one that really stands out is and that the one a, that's at dollywood right now? yes sorry. it's at dollywood that's the one yeah my, my let parents will go through it that's yeah that tells you when i started so <laughs> my I'm, I'm showing my <laughs> showing my age <laughs> my my parents were just there and they know that i'm like in the rv industry they made sure to take pictures and stuff and send them to me and they were like have you ever seen dolly parton's bus or or rv it's here at the it's here at our park so that was really cool it was it was yeah. a royal coach yes yep it was our know. first one so well, thank you so much. We really appreciate you taking the time to, uh, I know we we uh, had a, a little bit of a scheduling conflict, so we really appreciate you taking the time to uh, oh, it's make time for us. Pleasure. I enjoyed talking, talking about it, and thank you guys for making it easy. We want to thank Mindy for her time and joining us today. As you just heard, there are a lot of things to take in consideration when coming up with a functional floor plan that also looks aesthetically pleasing. The next time we tour a motorhome, I will have a better appreciation of everything that went into the layout, including safety measures that are in place to keep us safe while enjoying the open road. To find out more about the Rev Group, including Fleetwood, American Coach, Holiday Rambler, and more, go to RevGroup.com. As always, we want to thank Battleborn Batteries and Wholesale Warranties for sponsoring this episode. Take care, all, and safe travels. This episode is brought to you by Battleborn Batteries. Battleborn batteries are the best name in the RV and marine industry. These batteries are designed to replace your existing lead-acid batteries. They come in a variety of dimensions and amp-hour capacities. This ensures there is a Battleborn battery that is right for your needs. These batteries are backed by a 10-year warranty, allowing you to get out there and stay out there. The best solution for your battery anxiety. Whether your adventure is on the road, on the water, or off the grid, Battleborn batteries keep you out there longer.